What's going on everybody? Good morning, good evening, wherever you are, and whatever time it is, and welcome back to yet another video with you, man. Immersion Holic, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another online battle for the Divided Imperial Overhaul mod for Total War Rome 2. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have a recreation, essentially, of the Battle of Cannae. We have our consul leading the Roman legions, Gaius Terentius Varro. And here is our massive legion. <laughs> uh, obviously, this is an online battle. This is played between me, who will be playing as Roma, of course. And I am going up against my very good friend and fellow YouTuber, Toxborg. Toxborg is commanding the Carthaginian army, led by Hannibal. Hannibal Summer up here with his personal bodyguard organizing the army. Um, and we've done a little bit of a Battle of Cannae recreation. We have the uh, creek. Or, I guess you'd call it more of a river running along one side of the battle. There was more of a creek during the battle, I believe. Um, and then we also have the hills off to the flank as well. So this kind of forces... We'll just pretend that Kenai is over here in the background, along with its granary. So we'll just pretend that our forces are being forced into battle with each other. Um, we are doing a river battle, so I've obviously crossed my Roman legions across the river. And now... Um, our forces are drawing up for battle before we begin. A um, couple things to note. One, this is a 40 versus 40 units battle. So, in saying that, our um, potential use for money is massive. Um, we have way too much money. This is not a very balanced battle in terms of rules or, um, like I said, the economy uh, that we used. We had about 100,000 uh, gold or ducats available. I forget what they call it. Um, but yeah, we had basically all the money we could want to create, hopefully, a massive army that would be relatively uh, immersive and realistic. So, for example, I don't just have, like, heaps of Imperial era uh, units. I don't have any, in fact. All I have is the um, Polybian era units, such as Histadi, Triarii, and Velites, and uh, some auxiliary units, such as Slingers. Um, so I'll go over my army fairly briefly. I'm not going to be too specific about this because these armies are massive. And then we'll give the Carthaginian army a little bit of time to line up for battle. Um, and then we'll go over at least the majority of their composition as well. Um, this will be a pretty typical online battle except for the fact that our units are massive. And another thing I want you guys to note is that a lot of our units have veterancy. For example, my Triari, I have full, fully fledged three star um, goal levels of veterancy. So their attack and defense is way higher uh, in addition to their morale. I did that for quite a few of my units. I tried to change it based on what uh, the unit type was. So, for example, for my Principes, I didn't give them any gold rating, I just got them up to the silver uh, three level there. Um, for my. Slingers, I made them uh, at the same level as Principes because these are Balearic and Rhodian Slingers, so I thought that was fair. Hestadi, though, they're only going to have three levels of the first, like, uh, bronze rank there. So, you know, they do have some buffs, but nothing too big. Um, and then my Velites at the front are pretty well trained and experienced, but they only get to one Silver Chevron. Uh, Calvary, what did I give? Three gold ranks for my Equites on the right, and on the left-hand side... Yeah, just gold stars all around, pretty much, including our generals. So you can see we're trying to follow a bit of a traditional setup in terms of veterancy and experience for our army. Lesser uh, trained and uh, experienced units at the front, followed by, you know, pretty experienced, and then followed by our most uh, hardy and experienced troops. So going into a little bit more detail, starting left to right, we obviously have a large flank of cavalry. Our left-hand flank is overloaded compared to our right, in that we have two sets of Ligurian cavalry over here, and then two sets of Numidian cav. Um, and then this is, uh, I guess, contrasted by our right flank being quite small with cavalry, only having two sets of Roman equite cav. Um, so these guys are very good cav, but they're pretty uh, small in number, and it's only two units on our right. So, as per the Battle of Cannae, we have the cavalry massive disadvantage uh, let's go through our lines though so the beginning of our uh, army or legion we have the velites and we have four sets of them they're going to be pushing forward through the forest trying to uh, skirmish with the enemy before our troops move in uh, we then have the second very long line right along here 
And this is con uh, consisting of our principes. I mean, our Hestati, sorry. I don't know why I said principes. Um, but we have different types of Hestati. For example, right here, this is a Roman Hestati unit. Then we move down the line a little bit, and you'll see that these Hestati are blue. That's because this uh, Samnite Hestati. Uh, so we have a couple Samnite uh, Hestati units there. In the middle, we have some more proper Roman ones. Uh, the Roman contingent goes to about here, so our center is more Roman. Uh, then going to the far right-hand side, we have more Samnites yet again. Um, so, yeah, Hestati consisting of the first major melee line. Behind them, we have Slingers. We have two sets of Rhodium Mercenaries and two Balerics. Um, so, obviously, they're going to come in as a pretty big deal for us. And then we have yet another line of melee troops, which is our Prince of Pace, as I said before. And it's the same kind of deal as the Hestati. We have um, Samnite units mixed in alongside regular Roman citizens who will be uh, fighting. Um, but that's the only thing you really need to know about that is just a couple of Samnite units. Eh, it's about half and half of regular. Uh, and then in the rear, though, we have just pure Triarii. Um, all Roman citizen Triarii. One, two, three, four, five units of them. General uh, Consul Varro is in the rear up here. And that is our formation. So pretty typical Roman one. Very ignorant. Uh, I didn't try to do anything too tricky with this battle. Uh, let's go ahead and press play for a little bit. Let the Carthaginians get up into position. We're expecting them to kind of uh, present us with a solid line going right across here. We shall see. Uh, you can see pretty early on though that they have a lot going for them and the Carthaginian army is certainly better off um, just straight up from the beginning and we can't even see their full army um, there are some units that are hidden and then some units that will change positions as well but I mean, you can see the majority of the army though um, all right let's hit pause and let's go over the Carthaginian roster pretty briefly Okay, everybody, so on our left-hand flank of the uh, Carthaginian army, we have heavy chariots. Heavy chariots, note. Uh, and that's the chariots that will have scythes on them, so very deadly if left unattended. He then has two units of Carthage Sacred Band Cavalry. Oh my goodness, they're excellent. Although his cav doesn't have veterancy, um, so that will help us to uh, win the fight. He then has in his front row three sets of elephants uh, all of them being atlas elephants with the center one being um, the atlas elephants with the towers on them so the men on top will throw javelins won't get them a lot of kills but it helps um, we then have a very long first main line right here and this consists of spearmen mainly uh, gauls in the center uh, basically from here to about there and then on the left hand flank we have some sacred band uh, hoplites from carthage on the far right hand side we have a mirror of three more units and um, we then also have the right hand side cavalry two sets of Carthage sacred band cav and then another heavy chariot so very heavy on high tier uh, cavalry units uh, let's go to the second line so second line right here just consists entirely of Balearic slingers he has six units of those he then has uh, Hannibal right here in the center of his formation Carthaginian sacred band cav Moving over to the left-hand side of the army, though, we have three sets of Iberian champions. Very, very good unit, and this is where we're going to see the veterancy of these units come in massively with an attack of over 20, defense 12, um, base brown 58. These guys are going to be beastly. We then have two sets of mercenary Greek hoplites, and then we're going to see the same setup on the right. Check more champions right here, two mercenary Greek hoplites, and that's all we can see of the army for now. I will point out when we see more units. I believe there are some hidden. Um, but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let's hide the UI over there. And let's get the Battle of Cannae started. Let's hope that Rome can change history and win the day here at Cannae. Battle begins with the Carthaginians moving for their entire army. They are not holding back at all. They're going to be using the forest to their advantage. We'll give some cover to their elephants, unfortunately. We have spread our velites apart a little bit, so there is gaps right here in between them. Hopefully the elephants will go down them and then straight towards our legionaries who are using uh, Pila. And we also have slingers right here. We'll see if that ends up holding uh, well. 
Our Triaria we cut in half and sent over to the right hand side of the battlefield just to try and um, mirror the uh, Carthaginian position because they do have uh, a very long line compared to ours. We then see two more Carthaginian units come out of the uh, hills which is their Numidian cavalry. They will receive a direct charge from our own Numidians. And our other cav will rush to get involved in melee combat. Meanwhile, towards the center, enemy elephants are charging forward. They are receiving massive amounts of fire from our men, but they're still just plowing on through. The right-hand side of our army is also getting harassed by enemy cavalry as they're coming forward. Triaria would try to help stop that. All of our Hastati go into square formation to try and hold back the enemy elephants. We are seeing them stampede over here on the left, and they are going to turn around and run towards their own troops. The right-hand side unit, though, comes in basically completely unscathed. And despite running into a square uh, unit, it doesn't matter. They're just going to get massive amounts of damage and probably wipe out that unit. The center unit does get killed off. This left-hand unit just keeps coming back and forth, back and forth. So our Velites are in utter disarray. The enemy slingers are also starting to hit us. You can see there, look at all the traces going through the uh, forest. Valeric slingers are doing work. Meanwhile, on our left-hand flank, we have some mixed results. Um, we are losing some of our men, but the enemy is also taking some pretty heavy casualties themselves. And as long as we can get them stuck in a long grind-out fight, we should end up dealing a lot of damage to them, possibly even winning the cav fight. We'll see. Their chariots are trying to retreat and move around. We're going to try to chase them down over there. We even have a smaller engagement happening further up the hill. And uh, Consul Varro, uh, Varro himself will be coming around to try and offer support alongside his slingers. Um, still have some rogue elephants going at it. Despite being in square formation, it hasn't really helped stop the enemy uh, elephants whatsoever. And while we've been dealing with all of this, the enemy units... Uh, charged straight into our chariot and pulled through them and then came down here which makes sense because it is a chariot unit it's not dealing massive amounts of damage but it is drawing our men further out of position and it's forcing our principes as you can see to go into square formation in this uh, bubble right here it's not looking good we're basically being uh, put on the back foot instantly at the beginning of this battle Pharaoh's over here getting involved trying to help Swing the battle in our favor. We have some men retreating off the battlefield. Farah will be coming around to try and do what he can. You can see the enemy chariots coming in hard, smashing into our slingers. Really not good for us. They almost get wiped out. Lose well over half of their men and they're on the brink of routing. Very, very tough. This is, uh, you can see that this battle is going to be a struggle for us. Look at the amount of fire coming in right now. There's still a, a unit of elephants left alive on the right hand side. Um, the enemy has posi positioned their troops sorry, in such a way that their slingers can smash our entire front line. They're protected by their spears and hoplites. Um, and we also cannot really see their champion units either. Uh, there's one there that's just gone hidden, but... We're basically, at this point in the battle, I'm going to start losing track of where their champions are, so you will see a full-on attack order being given soon. Left-hand flank is starting to kind of stabilize. There is still that chariot unit that's come over from the right, but with Vara coming in and uh, some Chariot getting sent to the left, it's actually starting to swing back in our favor. Um, when we are locking the cav down over a long period of time, too. So because our unit's uh, so good at melee uh, engagements, actually not going to do too bad. Meanwhile, first line of the Legion is sent forward. At least our first melee line. This will be our Hastati. They'll be uh, hopefully taking on the um, Gallic Spearmen that are in the center of the enemy formation. Definitely not a trap. You can see the attack orders are coming out now. Boom, boom, boom. Principes will be following up close behind to offer support as well. Enemy mainline is still larger than ours, not by a massive amount, but we are having to send in our Principes and area very close behind to try and support our men. See our spearmen pull back. I mean, the enemy spearmen pull back. And then what you're going to see is the champions come forward. 
Spearman will get engaged, but with these, uh, look at this. Excellent positioning by the Carthaginian army. The uh, enemy spearmen pull back, but they pull back just deep enough so that our Romans have to push forward, and now they are completely vulnerable to getting charged in the flank from the enemy champions, which is exactly what they're going to do. Um, very uh, skilled maneuvering on Toxborg's part, and of course I couldn't see it. The forest is really blocking my vision during this battle. I know it's, it doesn't look too bad, but these trees were messing me up a lot because my camera was over here trying to micromanage the cavalry fight, which actually went really, really well for me. Uh, we ended up swinging it back at your area. I came in and got involved. Varro is about to rat the last of the remaining cavalry over there, uh, over there, although they do have some that will be coming back from re retreating. It's not a big deal. Of course, I have some of our skirmishes coming back, but most of them are out of ammo, so I'm not going to micro them too heavily. Right hand flank of ours is suffering just as bad as our left. We're sending forward our Triera to try and pin the enemy units. Um, but again, we're seeing their champions outflank our center. And now Hestati in general are just really freaking terrible. Um, it also doesn't help if they're being mauled by the elephants before engaging the enemy's uh, infantry. Here comes the champions. We are sending in our Principes right now. Not across the entire front, but just where it needed, such as right here. And then over there, because I do eventually recognize that he is outflanking me, which is why a lot of my Hestadi are just melting under the pressure. Let's come in and try to do a close-up. FPS will be a little low, but that's okay. Still looks pretty gorgeous, though. But man, these champions are just deadly. It's going to be hard for even our most seasoned units to take on a unit with that uh, ferocity. Left hand flank of our army is holding okay along here, but we're not making any progress. Um, and we are trying to chase down the remnant cavalry over here. So you can see we just got a downhill charge. We will win that engagement, but it's going to take a bit of time, uh, of course. And then we have our cavalry over here that will be coming out to try and help out. Be going up over the hill to help there, and then also coming over this way to try and help our line but you can see pretty much across the entire board our troops are just not making any progress and if anything they're losing about to lose a unit here and then over here uh, and we've committed the majority of our principes by now we've been sending some men around to the right hand flank you'll see our skirmishers will even get involved in the melee at some point soon they're getting some nice shots but a lot of them are just out of ammunition by now because we're trying to focus on the elephants for so long. But yeah, the uh, champions will take some shots in the back. Help us out a little bit, but yep, yeah, there we go. Just ran out of ammunition just as I came in for the close-up. Astarte are struggling. Really recommend you never use Astarte. Always just bring Prince of Pace, but obviously we're trying to do a bit of an immersive army. Carthaginians have cavalry way in reserve that they're sending around to their right hand flank So that's going to be the nail in the coffin for us over there Not sure where these two units of cav came from. I'm guessing they were from the left side and just stayed back That must be it because their chariots came through not the uh, other cav We did end up routing all of their cav. It's just these fresh units that are coming in from the far flank Gonna have a very strong advantage against us and our infantry are all entirely engaged, so we can't just rush forward at Trier and they try and help support. Do have skirmishes that are trying to um, help out. But yeah, our cavalry is going to route pretty shortly after engaging. We do get a downhill charge, which will give us more speed, that's more damage, but it's not going to make a massively big deal. Varro has lost a lot of his personal guard as well already, so. Doubtful we're going to win that, at least uh, not without heavy cost to ourselves. And then our unit back here is actually having to be sent back to the right. Because, you can see in the last few moments that I haven't been looking at the main line, we have a massive hole that has opened up. This whole area is just an absolute mess because there's no Romans there. The Romans have retreated. So our center is collapsing, our right flank is surviving, but it's surviving in pockets. So it's basically just a matter of time. Till these units all die. Uh, even though they are Triarii, so they will last a while in combat, but they're going up against one of the best aggressive units in the game, which is the Iberian Champions. Uh, left hand flank, a little bit more promising for us, but not by a lot. 
Um, we really need to win the cavalry fight if we're going to have any chance. We're going to be trying to pull back Varro so we don't lose him. The enemy cav isn't being microed as quickly as ours is right now, so that's helping us get away as well. Six more minutes left in the battle. But uh, you can see, like, look how far these Carthaginian units are. They're just chasing our troops because Toxborg knows that in the you know, latest DEI patch, troops do come back from retreating quite often. Um, so he's going to be chasing us down all the way to the river. Enemy cavalry is now going to try and chase down our console. Obviously going to focus on him. We've lost all of our other cavalry. So at this point, we're just going to take the charge and... Not really do too much else about it. I might try to pull away, but it's not really going to be too much help because we're just going to have blobs of infantry retreat now. Our center is still completely wide open. Our right hand uh, side of the army is getting just swallowed up. And the uh, enemy general Hannibal over here is just having free reign to go where he wants and do what he wants. Um, so we're seeing what happens when you play as the Romans during the Polybrian reforms. And uh, you don't command them properly. Which, you know, don't get me wrong, this was just more of an exhibition battle to recreate a really fun scenario. So I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing this, but... I mean, I don't have any secret weapons laying around. We just have to see if the Romans can grind it out against these very veteranized Carthaginians. All of his spearmen and hoplites and swordsmen all have three gold, uh, gold rankings. I I'm not sure what level that is. But they, they're as veteranized as they can be, which is also a big part of why they're doing so well with morale and attack and everything. Oh, I know. I thought that was a cav unit. Never mind, it's Treyari. But like, like I said, you can see our pockets of troops are surviving for a while. Treyari are, are very good at that. They will live for quite a while. Um, but the Principes, they're just getting overrun now couple remnant forces being held out but that's just a matter of time until they're recharged left and flank not going well another big uh, gap opening up in our line uh, Varro is still alive though on the left hand flank the uh, Terraria managed to rout the enemy infantry so now the Carthaginian Cav are trying to fight and kill Varro this isn't their general though, unfortunately. Hannibal was too much of a coward to try and kill the console himself. You can see uh, the star, the banner, the standard of the legion under Varro on his day of command. Supposedly the more experienced general, inexperienced general, sorry. If you believe the uh, popular history. Either way. It doesn't matter. You can see the writing is completely on the wall now. Our center has shattered completely. We still have a couple units holding out over here. Three sets of Triarii. Principe unit? Yep. Samnite Principes. I mean, if we could have killed the enemy general, then maybe it might have swung things back in our favor, but it doesn't look like it's going to be happening. The enemy cav does end up routing, which is nice, but Varro's unit... He's down to 36 men. He is still alive, mind you, but still, that is not a lot of men to do much work with. We're trying to get in formation so we can do some rear charges. Here it comes. Recharging. What's this? Mercenary? Yeah, just a Greek mercenary hoplite, I think. The hoplite. But these guys are. Um, Three star silver. Oh, okay. My bad. I thought he had all gold infantry. Never mind. It's just three uh, ranks of silver. Still very veteranized, obviously, but I thought he had all gold for his infantry. Never mind. My bad. Cavalry is not veteranized. They've actually earned those two bronze ranks that they have. I don't think I give the attack order. Oh, no. Do I? No, I don't. I try to pull away and then force him to run into my Triarii. He still manages to charge through them, though. Varro isn't going to like that. He's exhausted. His men are tired. Most of them are dead. And he can see the rest of his army is completely messed up. <laughs> There's just no way we're winning now. It's GG's, ladies and gentlemen. Triarii will hold out to the end as they should. If in doubt, go to Triarii. And we were very much in doubt for 
all of this battle, really. I don't think there was ever a part in the battle where it was looking well in our favor. We had some really cool units, don't get me wrong. But with Toxborg pulling a real nice Kenai battle style tactic, where he withdrew his main line and allowed the sides to outflank our men. Probably wasn't even necessary, his Iberian still would have won the day for him. Um, but man, just doing that just made it so much faster for him. Varro has fled the field now. You can see all of these Romans out here retreating. There goes Varro with his entourage. Not gonna die alongside his men. Absolute mess. Look at all these Romans running from the field. Very few Carthaginians were killed on this day. Hannibal is moving in for the kill against our other troops. Coming down to the last 30 seconds of the battle, and yeah, you can see the wave is coming, and even the Triarii here. They get a war, a uh, intimidate ability against them. And it's just no good. Hannibal leads a final rear charge against the Roman troops. The majority of the uh, Hastati, Principes, and Triarii now are in full retreat, and Rome loses the Battle of Cannae. As they did in real life. Holy immersion. <laughs> close defeat. That's a lie. It was not even a close battle. Uh, GG to my man Toxborg. Um, I will very briefly go to the statistics screen, but I'm not going to go into the ifs and buts of every single unit just because there is so many. But regardless, if you do want to see the stats, let's go have a very quick look. Okay, everybody. Here you can see the statistics of the battle. Um, you can see that I deployed 7,100 men. Uh, whereas the Carthaginians had 6,300, so it's quite fitting that we technically had more men. Um, I'm not really sure how, though. I guess because we had um, so many skirmishers, whereas he had more units like chariots and elephants. Four, four, five of his units were units that were pretty restricted on numbers, which is the elephants. Uh, three, uh, three sets of elephants and then two heavy chariots. That's five units. That's quite a substantial part of his army. Um, if those were, say, like, you know, Iberian champions, then that probably would have bumped it up to more of around like 6,800 or something. So, um, anyway, that's why there's that big disparity in numbers. Uh, obviously, we lost a massive amount of men 5,000 dead. That's just absolutely abysmal. We only killed 2,500. Um, yeah, you can see though the problems with the army and it kind of creeps up the Hastati The highest we have is 47 kills on oh, no, a 56 on the Samnite Hastati and the, the majority of our Hastati got 20 or 30 kills max That's really sad and then you can see it continues on to our Principes um, Averaging out around 80 to maybe 90 or yeah around 80 um, Only one of our Principe units of our Roman ones getting triple digits one of the Semnite units did as well, um, but you can see like the kill count climbs up, but it climbs up very, very slowly. So our Principes did a bit better than the Hastati, but not by a massive amount. The Triarii actually did quite well, considering almost all of them were surrounded. Uh, and even then, we only lost one uh, that fought to the death. The others retreated at the end of the battle, which is fair enough, you know. Uh, Varro fled the field, the rest of our army was already in shambles by the time these Triarii really got into it, but I'm surprised by how many kills they get. Um, so that is quite noteworthy and something to think about for your own Roman armies. Maybe you want to do something like what me and Toxborg have done. Uh, we've done a few battles in this setup, by the way, where we just have an absurd amount of money and we're just going to create some immersive-ish armies, throw them at each other, and just try to make a really cool uh, spectating thing for you guys to watch because it's a really cool battle. Um, Obviously, if we were playing a little bit more uh, serious or competitively, I just wouldn't b bother bringing Hestati. I've always complained about Hestati sucking. Every time I do, there's at least one person in the comments that's like, Imagine how, like, shut up, you did. Hestati is so much better. I mean, you're entitled to your opinion, but dude, I just see them consistently not do well. And while these Hestati, don't get me wrong, they got smashed. They had elephants, skirmishers hitting them. Uh, Iberian champions coming in the flank, so you know they did have it tough. Don't get me wrong, but why would you bring them instead of just bringing more principes? You know what I mean? 
Um, and I say that not just for a battle like this where we have basically infinite money, uh, but also from a campaign perspective. I just think Principes are just so much more cost effective uh, and you're going to get higher numbers for your investment. Which, you know, is the same as being cost effective. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I really hope you guys enjoyed this little uh, historical recreation. But of course, as it should be, Hannibal wins the day. Consul Varro is executed by the Carthaginians once he was captured. Also, ladies and gentlemen, please do not forget to go check out my man Toxborg. Link to his channel will be down below where he will post his point of view of this battle. I'll also have a few more battles between me and him coming up in the next week or two. Uh, but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I shall see you in the next one.